true polar shift, a wandering magnetic pole could point to an unsettled Earth core. This is bad news, of course. This is by Jamie Seidel AP on Newscom Australia. Earth's protective magnetic field is acting erratically, throwing the magnetic North Pole off kilter. But the cause could be far worse. We know that it's going at about 30 miles a year. It's moving from Canada towards Siberia. The Arctic's melting ice may have be having a far deeper impact than we expected, and we're seeing large unexpected shifts in the magnetic North Pole. This could be symptomatic of changes deep within the Earth's core, but it could also throw the entire planet off balance. Is that so? As with everything else about the biosphere, that is our planet Earth, the magnetic field is part of a subtly balanced and interlocked system. Series of studies show the amount of ice lost off the Greenland landmass was 267 gigatons in 2017. In 1996, it was 97 gigatons. To put that in perspective, a single gigaton is an ice cube one kilometer wide, one kilometer tall, and one kilometer long. This change has been measured by satellites. In some photographs, they photograph the belts, others use lasers to measure the height of the ice. Some sense the minute decrease in gravity caused by the loss of mass. As this ice retreats, ocean currents are changing course, new shipping lanes are being opened to Canada's north, the salinity of the surrounding sea is becoming reduced because more fresh water is entering that area of the ocean, but now it appears there is a lot more going on. Greenland isn't as heavy as it was. This means the pressure it applied to the veins of magma pulsing below deep below the Earth's surface has reduced, and this swirling mass of molten iron is shifting, and it's shifting faster, and it's shifting in new directions. This could account for the highly erratic shift in the position of the magnetic north. It also could give the whole planet an unexpected shake-up. A true polar wonder, this pale blue dot wandering through space is locked in an internal feedback loop, and what happens to one aspect of this little world affects another, in turn affects another. In 2018, a study by the Science Journal Geophysical Research Letters examined fossil signatures found deep in ocean sediments around the Hawaiian Islands. It suggests the Earth's magnetic field is not the only thing to occasionally undergo a dramatic shift. The same can happen of the, to the Earth's surface. The Earth's surface, even while spinning, the Earth remains in the same angle it is against the Sun, like a ball. Exactly which part of the globe that spin centers on depends on centrifugal force balancing out its weight distribution. So, for example, today we may have the North Pole over where it is today, and tomorrow the North Pole may be between, somewhere between California and Kamchatka, in other words, a lot more south. That changes the way our continents look and their relationship to getting sunlight. Now, the Hawaiian hotspot was fixed relative to the spin axis from about 48 million years ago to about 12 million years ago, but it was fixed at a latitude farther north than we find it today. This is what Daniel Woodward Woodworth said. He's a graduate student of Rice University. He said, by comparing the Hawaiian hotspot to the rest of the Earth, we can see that shift in location was reflected in the rest of the Earth and is superimposed on the motion of tectonic plates. That tells us that the entire Earth moved relative to the spin axis, which we interpret to be true polar wonder. Essentially, the Earth's surface was thrown off kilter. And that is probably why the magma blob in the middle, in the mantle beneath the crust, generally everything is kept relatively consistent by the balancing effect of Earth's rotational centrifugal force, but it's not always like this. Magma flows can shift, its consistency in certain places can change, 
Now imagine you have already really, really cold syrup and you're putting it on hot pancakes. This is what Gordon, the W.M. Keck professor of Rice University, Earth's Environment and Planetary Science said. So as you pour it, you temporarily have a little pile in the center where it doesn't instantly flatten out because of the viscosity of the cold syrup. We think the dense anomalies in the mantle are like that little temporary pile, only the viscosities are much higher in the lower mantle, like the syrup. It will eventually deform, but it takes a really, really long time to do so. If these magma blobs are big enough, they can unsettle the planet's spin. While the Earth's ankle relative to the Sun does not change, the position of the continents changes. Essentially, centrifugal force pulls this blob of magma closer to the equator. From the perspective of the continents, the equator appears to shift. The study said the last time this happened was about 3.2 million years ago. It moved Greenland and parts of Europe and North America further north. It may have triggered what we call an ice age, said Professor Gordon. Well, maybe this also has to do with continents shifting and changing position. Ge it's a geological pressure cooker. Less than 100 years ago, the idea that the Earth's continents could shift position was considered ludicrous. But the discovery of plate tectonics changed that virtually overnight. The Earth's outer crust is a system of solid plates floating on a mantle of highly pressurized, super hot rock beneath. These cycles constantly, as do their, these, these uh, hot rocks cycle constantly, as do their continents they contain and through the tectonic forces expressed through volcanoes and earthquakes. It may just be a matter of a few centimeters every year, but it's already been enough for the GPS network to have to be reset to avoid navigational errors. As we know, the ships use GPS and they many times have automatic pilot, but uh, they know where they're going through GPS because many times, of course, they may have storms or at night and they don't know where they're going. So it's easy to forget the driving force for all this as it is far, far out of sight, the ebb and flow of the molten metals of the Earth's mantle and core, as our planet rotates around its axis, this liquid iron is churning, and that's a good thing. The interaction of iron on iron generates electrical currents that power the magnetic fields that shield the surface of the Earth, and this bounces the worst of the sun's radiation and even powerful cosmic rays. Also, there's a constant interaction between the molten core and the, sol the solid crust. Magma can cool, shift and cool as the crust above changes, and it can result in areas becoming more or less dense in magnetic material, and it can affect the circulation of molten magma around it. Such changes could account for mysteries such as the powerful South Atlantic magnetic anomaly that has claimed several satellites in recent years. It also changes the balance of the Earth's magnetic field, causing the location of the North and South Poles to wander. And then they can even flip. In other words, if you were alive about 800,000 years ago, that was about one of the uh, Yellowstone supervolcano eruptions, uh, and facing what we call North with a magnetic compass in your hand, the needle would point to south, a NASA commentary reads. But the implication now is the balance of the Earth's crust itself can be unsettled if the magma below shifts and changes in unexpected ways. Now what's happening in the Antarctic? It's a wild card. Just as the tectonic plates react to shifts in Greenland's weight, so too they react and are affected by Antarctica. The ice is melting in Antarctica faster than ever, ever before, about six times more per year now than 40 years ago. And as the ice sits on land, the runoff is leading to increasingly high sea levels worldwide. Already Antarctica's melting has raised global sea levels more than 1.4 centimeters between 1979 and 2017, a report in the week's ed ed edition of the uh, Science Journal Proceedings of the National Academy of Science, PNAS, reports. The rise of 1.8 meters by 2010, 1.8 meters, that's almost six feet, 
as some scientists forecast in worst case scenarios, would flood many coastal cities that are home to millions of people around the world, previous research shows. And it would also greatly reduce the weight of, si of ice sitting on Antarctica and redistribute that weight on the ocean floor and the magma beneath, as we explained as is happening in Greenland. Now, for the current study, researchers have embarked on the longest ever assessment of ice mass in the Antarctic across 18 geographic regions. Data came from high-resolution aerial photographs taken by NASA, along with satellite radar from multiple space agencies. And researchers discovered that from 1979 to 1990, Antarctica shed an average of 40 billion tons of ice mass every year. By the years 2009, to 2017, the ice loss had increased more than six times to 252 billion tons per year. Even more worrying, researchers found that areas that were once considered stable and immune to change in East Antarctica, for example, are shedding quite a lot of ice as well, the study finds. A total amount of ice in Antarctica, if it all melted, would be enough to raise sea level 57 meters. 57 yards. By far, the most ice in Antarctica is concentrated in the east, where there is enough sea ice to drive 52 meters of sea level rise, compared to about 5 meters in the entire West Antarctic ice sheet. The latest research shows that East Antarctica melting deserves closer attention, this according to PNAS report. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.